Hi. Hi. How's it going? I've been crying my eyes out today. Um, I can read to you what I wrote that kind of triggered my, I don't know. Journaling? Not really. I was, um, okay, so let me start from the beginning. As you know, um, I've been using music videos as a form of therapy to not only, like, push my way through, um, uh, doing things that I wasn't allowed to do before and, like, prevent myself from being tempted to go back to gym and stuff like that. And there's also a lot of songs that fit, make help me feel empowered in what I'm doing and validated in why I left. And then there's songs that remind me of him and make, make me feel confused. And so those aren't the best ones to listen to. But, um, I don't know, a week or two ago, I decided that instead of sharing things with him that I find that I really want to share with him, that I would start to send emails to a dummy email address. So that way it feels like I'm sending it to him and like I'm writing him letters and emails and saying how I feel about certain things, kind of like the concept of writing a letter and then ripping up and burning it. Right. Just to get it off my chest. And so that's kind of what I did today was I started writing and it just poured out. And it was really triggering. And basically, it's a song by, um, you know, Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton, and they're the hottest couple right now because, oh, yeah. you know, whatever. And they made a song together. It came out a couple months ago, and it's called I Never Wanted Anyone But You, or something like that. And the first one that I wrote, I just let it flow. What is that? Free association, right? Right. And it basically says, uh, I don't want anyone but you, and I never have wanted anyone but you, and because you couldn't believe me, you refused to believe me, you lost me, and now I will never have anyone, not even you, because you still can't trust that I only want you. You still don't want to see how your mental issues, not your autism, but your paranoia disorder or whatever you have, you lost me. I was ready to kill myself to prove to you that I didn't want anyone but you, Jim. I had a fucking plan. I had a fucking plan that involved a small chance that the kids would discover me, and that's when I knew that I needed to get out. That was years ago. You don't screw up someone like this and just act like you didn't ruin her, and don't blame her when you kept drilling it in her head that she was untrustworthy. I was trustworthy, Jim. You're the one that took things out of proportion and twisted it into your stupid brain and caused fights to make me believe that you are the only sane one. I am a goddamn good woman, Jim, and you lost me, and now I have to lose you too. Damn you. And so I sent that to nobody at about 2.48 this afternoon. Right. And I was crying throughout the whole thing because one of the things that one of the therapists at Lifeline challenged me with was recognizing that I'm afraid of my anger and to allow myself to be angry and give myself permission to be angry and not hold back just because I'm afraid of what other people might think or feel or like Jim, I would never feel safe enough to express my anger to him which is why I kept asking for opportunities to tell him my anger in a safe environment you know and so um yeah I just unleashed it because I don't I don't think I really have since I've moved in here I don't think I've just gotten angry you know yeah. that's good for you I know it's tough I know it's triggering but it's better than avoiding it yeah well um about 3 12 in the afternoon so I was still in that mode. I hadn't come off of it yet. I really wanted to share something. I wanted to share this song with him and I wanted to share something with him actually, right? And so I started off this one and I said, I never wanted anyone but you and I still have never wanted anyone but you and now I can't have you because no matter what hoops you ask me to jump through, it'll never be enough for you. You will still have your stupid jealousy, your stupid trust issues, your long list of demands and instead of being with you, I fucking have to learn how to be alone. Well, fuck this shit. I will never meet your goddamn needs, Jim. Just leave me alone. Stop toying with my head and stop and just let me die alone. I'll probably die an old maid because you will never understand what your constant words of accusation has done to me. Will you? Damn you. So even though I'm trying to write to him directly, it just kept coming out and I kept re deleting and rewriting and 
finally, I just called him out of the blue. He's at work and I'm supposed to be working. And I says, are you busy? <laughs> and he's all, uh, why, what's up? And I said, I'm mad. And he goes, okay. And I go, and I have every right to be mad. He's like, sure you do. What's going on? And I go, I've always been afraid of my anger because I'm always afraid of hurting you or making you upset. And I just really need to express how angry I am at you right now because I can't move past this or work or do anything right now because all I want to do is just yell at you. <laughs> And he goes, okay, yell at me. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Don't sugarcoat it. Just yell at me. I go, well, I get it. I just keep writing this email and I keep deleting. He goes, go ahead and send it. Don't, don't hold back. Just give it to me. I need to hear it. And I'm just like, okay, fine. So I sent him this last one. I didn't send him the first one. And I was able to calm myself down. He never really replied to it till much, much later. And his reply to me was, I am sorry for putting, I'm sorry for the shit I put you through. I don't know how he writes. I'm sorry for putting shit for you to crawl through. You have every right to be mad. That's all he said. And after I got off work, he asked me to call him. And I said, why? I don't understand. I don't know what to say to you. You know? And he says, I'm worried about you. And I think because of what I said on the phone, you know, I think he thought I wasn't in a safe place because I don't usually go off on him, you know? So I called him just a little bit ago and, um, I said, I have every right to be mad. And then he starts defending himself or getting, you know, excuses or whatever. I go, stop that. I have every right to be mad. And if you aren't going to be someone that I can yell at right now, then I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to hang up. I don't have anything to say to you. If you can't just let me be mad. He goes, go ahead. Yeah, tell me. I'm sorry. I'm not listening. And so I yelled at him for a good 15, 20 minutes about how all I wanted was my happily ever after. And he just kept, he kept me down. He, he, he kicked me while I was down and made me feel like crap all the time. And... He, admit, he admitted and agreed and all that stuff that he he took a good thing and he took it for granted and he didn't. Oh. So he basically was trying to validate what I was going through, but he still really sucks at it. <laughs> yeah, because when you start defending yourself, then the validation is over. Yeah. You do have other rights to feel that way, and you know that. And it's good for you to process that and, and just get it out there. Um, it's, I know it's, it is triggering, and this is why we build, you know, build up defense mechanisms to avoid those things, because it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable, and I'm it does, very afraid. It does help the root of it, though. I'm very afraid of what happens to me when I get mad, too. I feel like I'm out of control with my anger. I feel like I can't hold it back, like, kind of like when Superman discovers his powers for the first time as a teenage boy or whatever, he doesn't recognize his strength. You know, and so yeah. he could really hurt somebody, or he could really do some damage. And that's how I feel with my anger. I feel like my anger is so unwielded that I just yeah, it overboils over, and I can't hold hold it back. Right, and, and the key is is not my uh, my computer just you, went mute. So uh, can you tell me that again? You said the key is what? Just, the key is is to learn how to direct the anger in a, in a healthy way, not to get rid of. It. Um, all of our emotions are, are there for, for our benefit. Yeah. But, but we can allow them to get overwhelming and controlling, and start controlling us. But in reality, a lot of people come into therapy and they want to get rid of their anxiety, they want to get rid of their anger, they want to get rid of their sadness or whatever emotion it is they're dealing with. Well, the truth is, is that it's impossible to get rid of those things. It's, but it is very possible to learn to control them. Just like Superman did. And it's and to use them for our benefit. I mean, anger, if directed in a healthy way, has you know started revolutions. It's changed the world, right? But when it's directed in an unhealthy way, it's very destructive. So emotions can be all emotions are good, but when they become controlling, then they become negative and damaging. So it's just about learning to to not to suppress your anger, but but learning how to express it in a constructive and healthy way through just the way that you did, you know, through, um, you know, writing, writing letters. I mean, I don't care if you're punching a pillow or, you know, or going to a, a rage room or, you know, there are, there are lots of healthy ways, exercise, running, you know, all sorts of ways to release that anger, not starting a movement, you know, starting a, a YouTube page. What, you know, lots of people start stuff like that out of anger and it becomes a healthy way to express it. Yeah, um, I feel like I've done... Don't want to yeah. Them. yeah, and I've definitely been expressing myself through lots of things, but the anger part 
I feel like it was it was oozing out of me and I didn't even start it was a love song it was a love song about how you, I don't want anybody else but you and I recognized like it was almost like if I explained it in noodle terms if Green Noodle really wants to get back with him and is having a hard time with that because her attachment is with him and she's unhealthily like addicted to him and Magenta has worked so hard to get us out of that and back on a track to be very focused on our self love and stay away from Jim it's like as soon as I start typing I never wanted anybody else but you blah 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 and then all of a sudden I just like I didn't even realize I was angry you know what I mean like and then it was like the connection of the two going yeah damn you now I can't have you because you did this you know and rather than uh, being responsible for where I'm at I, I, I keep putting myself responsible for being here and I keep saying I'm I'm a because I am I am I am responsible for me getting out and getting my own place and I can give myself those props on my back but it's okay for me to blame him for for why I had to choose this it's okay for me to be angry about that where I I I've been really careful about not wanting to blame my uh, blame him for that because he was in such a fragile position being in the behavioral center and coming out and feeling like crap and then every time I talk to him he sounds so pathetic and you know and I'm just like I gotta remain the strong one again just like I was when I was a kid when dad was falling apart and just like I was when you know everybody in my life is having a hard time I gotta be the strong one so that they don't see that I'm having a hard time with this too you know you see though the pattern with that though like like it, it puts so much responsibility on your shoulders I don't um, think it's a, something I consciously do I think it's a natural right, but, but think about like just that concept of how to be the strong one and, and even the the, uh, the codependency of, of feeling responsible for changing his emotions and right. changing his behavior you're taking on so much responsibility that's not your own if, if you can find a way to free yourself from all of that then then the the issues first of all i think a good portion of the issues you're struggling with would magically disappear if you don't feel compelled to take all that responsibility on yourself yeah uh, but then it would also give you more freedom to to work on your you know healthy self-concept um but but the bottom line back to what you were saying before is um, health, that healthy expression of emotion mm -hmm. um, rather than the suppression. The reason that's healthy is because when we suppress these emotions, no matter what the emotion is, if we're suppressing it, um, that is one of the things that causes a lot of the splitting um, that you've been dealing with. Because here's the thing, Crystal, is it comes out one way or another. Right. Like it's impossible to suppress something and have it never come back up. It will come back up, and it comes back up in the form of this splitting that you've been dealing with. Because yeah. it's a battle between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is filled with all the suppressed feelings that you've been suppressing. And it's through. it's oozing out, right? It's it, it can't right. help and itself. It doesn't always come out at the most opportune time either. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I also liken it to like my inner soul to my conditioned self. You know, it's like two battles between the two of them. Right, and that's the process, by the way, of psychoanalysis, is finding way, and just what you did with the, with the free association is an example. You are revealed, because there's a battle between the subconscious and the conscious mind. Yeah. And they're in conflict with one another. That's what causes the splitting in, in the noodles, honestly, you know. Yeah. Um, and if you can, if you can reveal in other words, I don't know what the opposite of suppress is, but... Express. 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 express right? Yeah. So if you that... can express... Yeah, if you can express those things, mm -hmm. then, then it, what happens is, is the battle gets weaker and weaker and weaker and there's less splitting. Yeah, actually, that's been my mantra the last month before I moved out. I was saying it all the time, too. I kept saying, expression is the opposite of depression. I say it to everybody because if you don't express it, it will find its way somewhere in your life, whether it be in a form of a cancer cell or like right now I have a pain in my back or a headache or it could be just spewing words randomly you didn't even know like word vomit you know <laughs> like you're gonna figure out a way your body's gonna figure out how to express those emotions even even joy if you're suppressing joy your body will figure out a way to express the joy in your life if you don't feel like you have a safe place to express it it'll yeah. figure it it'll figure it it's my out yeah. 
It's, it's true. Like when you when you when you laugh for the first time in forever and you can't stop laughing, <laughs> it like right. it triggers a, a chain reaction like dominoes. Right. So don't ever be, you know, like like it, like when you express things in a healthy way, you have control. Over yeah. That expression. Right. And you don't have control over the cancer. A, <laughs> yeah. If you don't do it in a controlled environment, it, it's going to come out. I think that's where I need to practice more anger um, things to control expressing my anger because I really am angry and I told Jim just before we hung up at 6 o'clock he says I love you and I go I'm still angry and he goes you have every right to be <laughs> I'm like I'm not shutting this down no you, you don't need to you know and that's that's the thing like like um, you have every right to be angry and you can't because you did it, I think you did it a little bit on both sides. Like, you took the responsibility of, of managing his emotions, right? Mm -hmm. But then... Oh, hold on. Hold on. I can't hear you. I don't know why it does that sometimes. I don't know why it does that sometimes. It just completely shuts everything off for a sec. That's okay. So you said... So, but at the same time, so yeah, so you took on the, the responsibility of managing his emotions and his behaviors. But at the same time, you suppressed your own. Well, and every right. time I tried to express myself, I was doing it in secret. Because it got to be so much, I started to record my own secret journals of how much I was going through. Because I needed to get it out one way or another. I needed to express it to myself. If, it, if nobody else, I just did it to myself. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good path for you, is to start expressing yourself more and, and alleviate yourself of that responsibility of managing other people's emotions and uh, you know and main primarily yeah. right uh, that's not your job that's not your responsibility this morning my son he got um i called him he spent the, him and his sister spent the night at their dad's and i called him about 7 50 in the morning about the time that they should be starting to walk yeah but yeah, he's not really um, he's not really taking any of this well, and and I'm really thinking like uh, I don't know if we figure out the schedule thing with your stuff. You mentioned that my kids could come in on a session yeah. or something. Yeah. So um, I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, so let me let me look at my schedule real quick because I've been kind of adjusting it. Because Thursday is the day I, I have to close, you know, work in the office and close um, one day a week, and it's Thursday. Okay. I'll that out today. Um, I have a, either a six or a seven open. Yes. Um, I don't have, I guess you could do both of those. Yeah, because you're, you're going to be leaving at four on Mondays and Tuesdays? Well, yeah, that's what I'm working towards. Uh, I'm going to be leaving at four every other day. So, or, or, actually, I'm going to be leaving at five, so my last appointment would be at four. So, gotcha. On every other day. So, But I do have a six, my six and seven open on Thursdays right now. Um, if I, I can, can snag it, that'd be good, I guess, because I'd rather do that than m lose anything. So that would be starting on 22nd. Okay. So let me, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the scheduling later because it takes a little bit to. Okay. So, but I'll do 6, 7, and on Thursday. The, um, oh, I just realized something. Okay. Every other Thursday at seven is the one with Jocelyn. Oh, okay. Well, what we can do is I can put you on the opposite one to do every other week. How about I do two every other week with you, but only one on those weeks I'm not with her? I no, mean, you, the on the way, so, you know what I'm saying? No, that's the way it would be if we did that. It would be one, one week it would be one session, and the alternate week would be two sessions. 
Um, and how early do you start? In I'm actually going to be starting at 9 mm -hmm. will be my first session. It used to be, it used to be uh, 10. Can I be complicated and just mention an idea I had right now? Sure. So let's say on the Thursdays that I'm with Jocelyn and Jim. Uh-huh. If you had a Friday 9 a.m., yeah. then I can talk about what happened the night before and go into my weekend feeling like I know where my head's at. Okay, so on the Thursday, on the week of the Thursday that you have couples, we would do a Friday 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And not Thursday at 7. Right, just a Thursday at 6 before the session with them, right? Right. And then at one at nine a.m. on Friday, and then at double the weeks I'm not with them. Is that confusing? No. So, so what I would schedule you then is every Thursday at six, and every other Thursday at seven. Every other Thursday at seven, and then the opposite. Is when it's not Thursday at seven. Friday at nine. Okay. I hope I remember that. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out because what I'll do is I'll pull up her schedule. Um, yeah, because our first and, one with her is then, in two days. Okay. So yeah, this wouldn't start until next week. Anyway. So I do a double next week with you. Yeah. That makes right. sense. And then because I already have 9 a.m. open right now on Fridays for physical therapy, but I'm running out of physical therapy units. Okay. But I'm still in FMLA and getting that time for that time off of work. So it, it wouldn't have necessarily have to be a permanent thing, but I really don't know what I'm doing with this marriage counseling business. And that's the part that's, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, I, I feel like I'm muddy in my messages to him. I don't feel like I'm clear communicating, you know? Yeah, I understand. But keep in mind that healthy expression of your emotions is it? You know, that couples therapy is a good place for that. Yeah. And that... You, you, you've got to be honest, and, and you can't be concerned what the therapist thinks about that. Or what Jim is going to be upset with or something. Yeah, and any, you know, any good therapist, you know, is not going to judge you for any expression of emotion. So you can't be concerned what she thinks about it. I don't think it's her that I'm concerned with. It's feeling safe that he's not going to manipulate the situation to make me look like I'm attacking him or something, you know, or being right. the unstable one, or like, okay, well, see? Huh? Fine, but, but, you know, that's not your responsibility if he does that. Right. You, gotta, you know, you gotta always, one thing I always tell people is any of that stuff that other people do to us, it's, it's, it's their problem. Mm -hmm. It's not our responsibility. You know, that's where a lot of you know trauma and, and uh, low self worth and all that comes from is personalizing what other people say and do to us and making it like it's our fault. You know, if you can get to the point where you free yourself of that and you're like, hey, this is more about him than me. I'm gonna yeah. be myself. I'm gonna express myself regardless. He can make it look however he wants, but who cares? And I agree with you. Like, I think logically or consciously or I don't know. I just think my my conditioning gets in the way of what I know sometimes and I have knee-jerk reactions to things that I don't even realize I'm doing until I've done them and I'm like what the heck right and that's part of that splitting mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so I think the more you find ways to express get some of that stuff out in a healthy way then probably the less of that you're going to experience all right I wanted to tell you three more things because I'm thinking how it's pertinent to what's going on with me today hormones are probably playing a key factor because it's about that time of the month that I would expect. And I usually do have, okay, let me say this. I usually did have a pretty consistent meltdown at least once a month if I was to track it. It really was about a few days or something like that before my monthly would start. I haven't gotten back on track with my meds. I haven't had an appointment with, shoot, I forgot her name. Yeah, Tiffany, yeah. And I feel that her, um, Her advice about medicine and whatnot is fine, but I'm not so keen on taking drugs to begin with. So why do I want to 
put my body through this Swiss cheese of medication when I'm not being consistent in anything right now. So I basically have weaned myself off of it, not intentionally, but that's where I'm at. So I'm, I think I'm feeling the full effects of what my my PMDD or whatever, if that's what it is. You know, it, it really did help when I was on the medication, the mild depre- antidepressant, because I didn't have these grandiose, I don't know if that's the right word, these grand meltdowns a few days before I would start. All of a sudden I just started and I'm all, where'd that come from? I didn't even know. <laughs> no warning. No warning at all, yeah. So, and I really appreciated that. And so when I would talk to her, I would tell her that I think that that is actually helping that part. But on the ADHD stuff, I still couldn't wrap my head around taking those pills consistently because of how badly they mess with my sleep, even the mild ones. And um, I really wasn't even sure they helped me focus all that much. Like I told you before, I just, it was hard for me. But if, if I'm being honest, I don't know if I could have left like I did if I wasn't on something to keep me in one consciousness consistently. You know what I'm saying? I I did feel less emotional whatever was going on whatever medication that was so I'm not completely turning my my head off of it I just I haven't figured anything out did I tell you I went and got my hearing checked no my ears have been weird for years no they've just been off like they hear differently so if you give me the same volume here as here you know I have to like listen like I feel like I'm an old lady that's been going deaf for about 20 years and It just seems to keep getting worse and worse, and because it's affecting my job now, I went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist a few weeks ago, and rather than her giving me a hearing test or looking at my ears intensively or anything, she looks at my nose and my mouth and, you know, my throat, and basically tells me that I've got a sinus infection. Take this antibiotic, do this nasal spray, do this saline solution, take mucinix twice a day. Like, first of all, I have never volunteered to put anything up my nose unless I can't breathe and maybe I'll try it. I just can't stand the feeling. It's a sensory problem. Like, even if I go swimming, I have to plug my nose to go under the water. I hate water up my nose, right? And um, I argued with her in the most kindest way possible while I'm there that I don't understand what that has to do with my hearing. Even though I know they're connected, I don't feel like crud. I don't think I have a sinus infection. I'm not coming in here with breathing problems or pain or anything like that. So I really don't want to do all this other stuff. And she said that she can't help me with that until I get this other stuff cleared up. So okay. I'm supposed to have been taking antibiotics these last few weeks, but I can't freaking find them. I bought the stupid saline solution and spent so much money on all this stuff and I can't even bring myself to start. Like I've, I've been going through so much other crap with this move that I'm like, I'm just gonna put that onto the side because my hearing has been a problem for years. I don't know why I even wanted to try to address it right now. So that's on the back burner along with Tiffany's medication. <laughs> like I, I feel like I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just, I feel like I'm just overwhelmed with so much right now, you know? Yeah. And then... Well, you may not need the medication right now. Um, because my environment's changed. Right. Right. You may not. I mean, and that's, you know, that's up to you, like, you know, whatever you feel. Um, the other thing that, not to put something else on your plate, but it would be, it could be interesting to have a hormone panel done on you. See if there's any imbalance. Yeah. My um, neighbor does hormone checks all the time with her doctor, and she's on hormone pills and blah, 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 and all that. And I guess because my sleep isn't that far off is why I figure, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, would, it wouldn't be a bad thing to look into. Okay. So, you know, hormones can cause, you know, high emotions, anxiety, and not just in women, but in men, Right. You know, men sort of depression testosterone levels draw, um, all sorts of, you know, you think about it, you know, our neuro, the neurotransmitters that our brain releases disadvantage emotions is very similar to the hormones that our body releases. And those hormones affect the way that we feel. It's the same thing. Right, so that's why eating right and exercising and drinking water and getting lots of sleep, like all of that's like real stuff because the endorphins and the and the serotonins and all the crap, you know, so I get it. I'm not, I'm not opposed to having it checked. It's just another, plus I, I got that interview and they told me not to take any more time off. So I'm like, ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not like urgent, but it would just be something that. Right. And, yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So the other thing, okay. So last night, I don't remember why, but Jim and I got on the phone with each other after I had my session with you. Oh, because he had the, the crappy situation. So, 
he had the city come out. Yeah, the sewer was backed up. And he had the city come out because it's an issue in the street, not something that he needs to fix. Right. And he um, was telling me about that. And he kept going on and on and on, like, okay, because he also got his car back from the shop, and he was so excited about his car, and he was ex rambling, rambling. To me, it just, it, it was like nails on a chalkboard, listening to him being in a good mood, because, I don't know, I think after my session with you last night, I felt like I, I felt like I was not supposed to be on the phone with him. I was supposed to be stronger than this. Why am I on the phone with him? Why am I listening to him? Why am I even over here? Why not? You know, like, I didn't want to go back to him, but I didn't want to listen to him either. So I was just getting really snippy with him, right? And I'm like, yeah, nice. I just took a big sigh. And he's like, what's the sigh for? And I go, you're, you're just, you're rambling on about something I really could care less about. And I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just going to let you go. And I tried letting him go several times in the, I think it was an hour and a half conversation. But he's so desperate to keep me on the phone so that he doesn't make me mad and like lose me or something entirely. And I just kept letting him have it last night with, you don't understand where I'm coming from. You don't understand where I'm coming from. You don't understand. And then I would give him examples of what, cause he wants to understand. And, and he, okay, so all you want me to do is X, Y, and Z. And then I'll, and then you'll be okay. Right. And I go, it's not a freaking math problem, Jim. It's not an, an instruction manual. It's a feeling. I want you to feel, I want to feel that you empathize with me, that you understand where I'm coming from. And that's not something you can do and then I'll feel it all of a sudden. And then he's like, okay, so if I do this and I go, okay, you're gonna need to write this down. You have something to write this down? And he's like, yeah, and I said, write down. I want you to, I had to do it every single word. It was so annoying, like he was some kid. I want you to understand where I'm coming from. And then I wrote, had him write the word, the equal sign. And then I had him write the word empathy. That's, that's where my anger was coming from last night was you're not empathizing with me. Finally, I got real hungry and it was nine o'clock and I still hadn't eaten. And I'm like, are you even paying attention to the kids? The kids are over at your house, you know, and go talk to them. Stop talking to me. Like I got really irritated with them and we said goodbye and hung up. And then in order to process my emotions over the last several weeks, sometimes I would go out shopping. Sometimes I'd walk over to the grocery store and I'd go pick up a big 24 ounce bottle of wine and bring it back. And I drink the whole thing for the night, which I don't want to get that into a habit thing, so I haven't allowed myself to do that. I've only done that twice in the last six weeks, right? And instead of doing shopping or drinking, I watched a movie that was rated PG-13, so I thought it was safe, but it still had a guy's naked butt. But it's okay. I'm living on my own now, so I, I had a panic for just a second, but then I released it. But anyways, the movie was called Eat, Pray, Love with uh, Julia Roberts. Yeah, I've heard of that. That was a book, too. And what was really insightful is I'd never seen that movie before. So what was really insightful to me about it was within the, just the trailer, it's on Netflix, just the trailer alone was speaking volumes to me, which is why I chose to watch it. And then the first nine minutes, I was ready to write down everything this woman was saying, because I related to it so much. And then there was parts that I didn't quite relate to because her situation's a lot different than mine. But I was soaking up as much as I could. I was taking screenshots, I was saving what I was learning, and one of the biggest things that I really took away from that movie, where she's in this um, religious place learning how to pray and stuff, and her mentor can see that she's feeling really down about her failed relationships, and he says, I know you feel really awful. And she says, yeah, I just still love him. And he says, still love him. And then she says, oh, but I miss him. And he says, so miss him. And then she says, I don't, I don't remember what she said after that, but then he said something like, um, set, wrap him with love and white light and let it go. You're allowed to love him. You're allowed to miss him and wish them well and let him go. And it's going to get easier the more often you do that. And that really helped me recognize that, okay, I'm allowed to miss him. I'm allowed to love him. I don't need to be in this confusion. I can just honor my feeling with it okay. and then wrap him in that love in my mind and let, let him go. And she, um, in her mind, a little while later, she's slow dancing at her wedding in her memory, right, to her husband. And he's saying to her in her mind how much he loves her. And she says, so love me. And then he says, but I miss you. And she says, so miss me. And then she says, and wrap me in the love and the light and let me go. 
And that was her way of forgiving herself for the relationship failing as well. And so I went to bed feeling a lot more peaceful and I woke up feeling more peaceful and I kept thinking about that and everything. And I think because I was in that space, it's how I was able to open up this channel of anger that I didn't realize was there. Yeah, sounds like it. That, that, that's a good message. It really is. Um, so when you were trying to explain to Jan what you needed, you know, I feel like the problem with that, and I, I actually spoke with another client about something similar not too long ago. Because, and, and here's the thing, you know, in therapy, a lot of the times, therapists focus on behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And try to, we even have a box that we can check behavior modification. Mm -hmm. That's what we worked on, modifying someone's behavior. Which to me, I think is kind of BS because I personally believe, and you tell me what you think about this, but I personally believe that behaviors are a, by, a byproduct of what we believe, what we believe about ourselves. Mm. Okay. So in other words, if you believe, if you have low self-worth and you don't have a lot of confidence, and you don't believe you're a, you know, a good person or whatever, or don't have value, your behaviors are going to end up reflecting, right? Just, just by changing the behaviors isn't going to change what you feel about yourself. Right. Right? And it's, it's the same thing where, you and I have talked a little bit about this, like with addiction, mm -hmm. right? You can change the behavior and stop drinking or stop using. But if you don't resolve the way you feel about yourself, you're just going through the motions and you're still going to be miserable. Right. right. It's just putting on a show or putting on a mask or a costume. It's, oh, yeah, it's going through the motions. Right. And in, rela in relationships, I and mean, this is what I really believe Jim is missing. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make a list of the behaviors that he wants to change. Yeah. But, the, 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 but that's just going through the motions. And like I wrote this down when you were talking about that. Um, intimacy produces behaviors, right? So intimacy, like knowing you, loving you, knowing you, and not sexual intimacy, but the act of caring, and like you mentioned, empathy, mm -hmm. right? That knowing you, being intimate, and just being conscious of what you need, and loving you and knowing you, will naturally produce the behaviors that you're looking for. You can't focus on the behaviors, like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this, and expect to gain intimacy from them. Right, because that's really a narcissist in the making when you have them focus on their behavior to manipulate the situation to get what they want. It's like, right. don't train them how to manipulate others. <laughs> don't train them how to do the behaviors to get what they want. Focus on why they feel that way about themselves to make them not naturally want to do it. Right, and it's like, it's like I... You can't teach someone how to love their wife. Yeah, you've told me that. Yeah. Do it again. We have this emergency technique extreme that interns can use if they're with a client that's in a crisis situation. Okay, like, what do I do? And there's a whole list of what you can do, like do a safety plan, do a no harm contract, make sure they have the crisis numbers. But really, all of those steps or what, what you would do, you're trying to protect the client, right? If you care about the client and you truly care, you're going to naturally do everything you can do to help that client, right? right? And so a lot of times I'll say, and I've said this to interns, like, pretend like you care about the client and let your behaviors follow, because that's really what it is. I mean, if you, if you really truly care about someone, you're going to do whatever your behaviors will be natural. You won't have to, oh, okay, what do I do? Do I do this, this, this? Right, this. because they'll sense that hesitation and they won't feel the, they won't feel validated. Right, right. And I've told interns, like, look, if this was your daughter or if this was your son and they were in this situation, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I would make sure that they were okay. I would do that. It's like, okay, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like, if you have to be taught how to care, you, you can't teach someone, you know. Right. That you can teach them how to, you know, what to do, but, but like we've, you and I have talked about before, is it lacks sincerity. And my concern with Jim is because he's an analytical person. Yeah. He's going to focus on, like he's trying to compile a list of exactly what he needs to be. But you can't, 
go through the motions with those behaviors without sincerity and have those behaviors last. Right. Because it's just pretending. It would be interesting if you staffed with Lola after tonight because he wrote that down that he wants to learn therapy. He said he would talk to her about it. He wrote it down that he he needs to stop allowing people to enable him. Like th Those are behaviors where when his mom says, oh no, son, she left you, she left the kids. I told him, I says, if your mom says anything like that, it would be really great if you could really own your crap and tell your mom to shove it. Like, no mom, I drove Crystal away. Like, if he really wanted to be honest about what happened, if he really wanted to get to the meat and potatoes of what's going on. Yeah. It's, it's a, I have another client soon coming on to my schedule, and I staffed with um, I staffed with the therapist for his wife, and what the therapist has described is it's very similar. It's a narcissistic relationship, mm -hmm. and now he's going to be coming to me. Uh -oh. And so I think it's good because in a way, like I'll have the opportunity to try to help help him the way I would try to help Jim, but. But, but the, the other side of that, though, Crystal, is it, it's it's hard because you can't teach sincerity. No. You know, like like I could say all of these things, like, look, you know, your behaviors will follow if you truly care. But you can't teach someone to care like that. I'm not saying he that Jim doesn't care. I'm I'm saying that he. I don't think he knows how. I don't think he's capable. And I yeah. think it's that autism piece because narcissists yeah. have a lack of empathy, and so do autism people and, and if Jim's mom is as narcissistic as I think she is she basically didn't help cultivate that you know and I'm watching it in my own son where he's not really empathetic to his sister or his friends or his or me or anything and it's like oh how do I help cultivate this in him it's 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 really not something I can teach I recognize that it's only something I can point out and say did you happen to ask your sister about such and such do you think that maybe she might want that also or you know and it really is a behavioral like Ding, ding, ding. maybe if I want this sort of positive reaction from people, I should probably be considerate to them, you know? Yeah, the, the same goes like for, like in relationships, right? It's the same thing with our relationship with ourselves, mm -hmm. right? If you know yourself and are confident in who you are, believe you have value in your your behaviors will take care of themselves. Right. right? I believe that, yeah. And, and so, you know, in therapy, a lot of therapists focus on changing the behaviors. Don't, you know, okay, don't do this anymore, don't do that, don't do this. But it's just, it's it's going through the motions, you know. It's like, you've got to get to the root of it. But the root of it is believing that you are worthy, that you have value. And all the stuff that's made you feel like you don't mm -hmm. is, is bullshit. It's a lie. There's a, a quote I read yesterday, I'm just going to figure out in my head, not verbatim, but, and it said, stop giving him the credit for you becoming strong enough to get out. You got strong, you were strong enough to get out because you were strong. You were strong before and you're strong now. Stop giving him the credit. Something like that. And I think that's exactly like the long same lines that you're saying is that there's something innate inside of me that I always knew was there that felt like there was something wrong with the situation. And I was the one trying to change my behaviors to fit him and what he wanted of me, but no, naturally, I am who I am, and I ain't gonna put up with it forever, and I knew it. I knew that there'd be a day where he'd miss me, and I'd have a hard time getting out, but, yeah. yeah. I didn't want it yeah. to be when I was 60-something or 70. I wanted it to be when I could enjoy my life. <laughs> yeah, I heard a quote that was something like, uh, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of dumb it down, because I don't remember what it was, but it was something like, some people believe they have value, and some people believe they're worthless, and they're both right. Mm -hmm. You know, because it really does come down to what you believe. If you believe you, you are, you believe you aren't, you're, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's really is what it comes down to, is believing in who you are, and being okay with it, right? Like, and the only way to get to that point is through an awakening, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I really believe that you and honestly, I believe that you will find your way to that point. And I believe that's going to change everything. Well, and I feel like my awakenings keep happening. Right. That's why I believe that about you, because you're percept perceptive and insightful enough to to recognize the moments that create the, those awakenings. You're aware enough. It takes an awareness to have an awakening, right? right? 
some people kind of go through life oblivious, and so something may happen that has the potential to be an aha moment, but they just miss it because they're too in their head or they're just oblivious. But but you like you know I mean it can come from watching a movie, it can come from listening to a song come from someone dying, you know, it can come from anything. I think of it like being at the bottom of a pit covered in trash, and every little thing I'm finding, it's like removing. It's it, Each epiphany has its own way of clearing the path, you know what I mean? Huh? Um, last night we were talking about um, how we're kind of, some of us might be used to it getting really bad before we could have a resolution, you know? Right. And I think what I recognize is me having all these anger and tears and uncontrollable crying and now my eyes are exhausted and I'm ready to go to bed early tonight. Usually I would use that as my catalyst to put a cap on it and move on, right? But it's like I've allowed myself to, it's okay to be angry and I'm not quite done with this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep talking about my anger and I'm going to keep doing free association and I'm going to keep working on this because there's something there. There's, there's a, a hidden gold mine in this a section of my awakening that I haven't quite cultivated yet. So, you know, I'm not going to let this this feeling of my eyeballs being raw be my cue that I'm done because I'm not done. You know what I mean? Well, sometimes they also say using your non-dominant hand when you're writing helps to, to activate subconscious. Yeah. Which I'm real, which I'm so. I think that's what you told me the other day. Yeah. I, I'm having issues with my hands there because the carpal tunnel and stuff. So I don't know if I'm doing that anytime soon. <laughs> that's why I started the video journals. I've had carpal tunnel issues forever. Oh, um, I guess the last thing I was going to say that I agreed with you about was I went to the job on Sunday to help this woman who was so wheelchair bound that she's in good spirits enough to appreciate people and be kind, but you can tell she's really feeling down on herself. And even though I've never done any job like that before, I didn't even know what motions I needed to go through to do the job. So I think my natural personality got me through the job because I can see what might need to be done or I can at least be friendly and kind and talk to her and give her conversation or ask questions because I'm inquisitive and so I think my natural personality came out as um hey so you know what people usually do to help you from the chair to the wheelchair I mean the bed to the wheelchair what how do you think we should do this because like the woman that was there with me has never done this particular client before either and so we were learning together, but because of her experience, she was ready to do everything the way she's used to doing things rather than asking the client. And me and the client had a couple of moments together where I said, was she a little rough when she did that? She goes, yeah, she was, she, she really hurt and stuff. And I'm like, and so I would try to interject like, well, how do you suggest that we do this? This is your routine. You usually do this with others, you know, tell us what you'd like us to do. Because I think that's where, I don't want to just go through motions like this other lady who knows how to do the job it's okay to ask questions. I think I'm just rambling, but anyways, yeah. No, but you're right. Like, like, but that's the empathy, you know, that's producing out of those behaviors. Like, you're not. <laughs> like, like, if it goes against what is helpful to that client, it's, you know, it's like, like, you know, it's, you know what it reminds me of? It's kind of a weird thing. But I was at a, a restaurant once, well, fast food restaurant, I don't know where it was, it was a long time ago. And they have a policy that, you know, they give you a number when you order, and then they call the number out, and you come get your food, you know, your food. Oh, I think well, you I, told me about this, and you were yeah, the only I, one in there, yeah. Yeah, but that's what it reminds me of, it's like, it's like going through the protocol without any regard for the relationship. Right. You know, all she had to do was say, oh, hey, sir, your food is ready, you know, but it's like number 15, Right. you know, it's like, uh, right, you know. it's so impersonal and cold, right? And it's like, it's one thing if it's busy and you're in a hurry and all that, but where's the human contact? Yeah, there's there's two women at my surgeon's office, one that's kind and does eye contact and the other one doesn't. And when you're hoping to get the one and not the other, when it's your turn to be called up, and when the lady who's not so kind is ready for you, she just is looking at her computer next and she never bothers to look for someone or lock eyes with someone or say good morning or anything like that and then when you come up to her she's still just looking down and just uh-huh okay and yeah all right you know and just really and so every time they've asked me to do a survey i always complain about her because she is just really rude and impersonal it's like <laughs> yeah but that's kind of what jim is doing is like he's following what he believes is the protocol like mm -hmm. the number 15 yeah he's doing it right but it, there's no 
there's no sincerity to her intimacy. Right, and then if he, if there is sincerity, it's like manufactured. It fills right. it fills faults, and so yeah, if if he doesn't get it, he doesn't get it, and I'm beating my head up against the wall trying to get him to see it. So I really need to learn how to let go. Because I thought when I moved in like, by myself, I would have been done with him, but obviously I'm not, because... That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, you, you override it to time, you know. You know, it's, I mean, I've been for a year or something. It's, it's just, cause you, may not, you may not be, right? Like, you can't judge yourself for what you do. I can love him, I can miss him, and I can wrap him in love and light and let no. it go. No. And I gotta keep doing it over and over, and I think the sever will eventually pull away, because... I don't even want to entertain a possibility of us getting back together right now when I'm even having a hard time just doing simple conversations with him. It's like... Yeah. You don't have to entertain the idea of getting back together, but you're still, you know, okay to love him. But, you know, you have a right to love and care about him and not be not the door Right. So. And, yeah, and I don't have to rush over there and I don't have to do any certain checklists or do any demands that he wants me to do. I get to love him the way I want to love him, and if that's from a distance, and not calling him, and just crying myself to sleep at night, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll adjust the schedule. So next week, uh, we'll start on... Uh, the 22nd? Thursday, or, yeah, Thursday at 6. And 7 for next week. Yeah. Then the following week, we'll do 6 on Thursday and 9 a.m. on Friday. That would be awesome. Okay. That all would right. really help me with all of this. Okay. All right. Wish, wish me happy birthday. It's a week from today. Oh, good. Happy birthday. I'll be 40. Wow. I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's my 11 years. Oh, whoa. That's okay. I all had right. a client. I don't remember if I told you this. I have a client who's 47. And she was talking about her parents once. She was like, and this was recently. She was like, oh, my parents, you know, they're sick. And, are always having health issues. Now keep in mind, this client is 47. I'm 51. Okay, so she's only I'm only four years old. And I'm like, well, I'm like, how old are your parents? And she's like, they're uh, they're probably about your age. And I'm like, what? How old do you think I am? <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, you're my wife's age. Like I'm four years older than you. Oh my gosh. I just thought it was funny. I'm like, is it the hair? She goes, no, it's actually the beard. Because <laughs> I have some gray, you know. But. The only reason why I knew you were older was because you have older kids that we've talked about. Right, right, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but you're on the 40 club now. Not yet. Give me seven more days. Okay. I'm still 30-something. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll see you next week. All right, talk to you later. Thanks. Okay. Bye. All right, bye. Oh, I really like my therapist. It's taken me a long time to find a therapist that I like. And I didn't like him all that much at first. He, he, he didn't seem knowledgeable enough for me. But he's figured out his way to talk to me, so. I've got so many freaking tabs open. I've got, let's see how many I got here. I got uh, six, eight. There's eight tabs over here. That's one tab. We can close that one. Yay, we closed the tab. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Really? That doesn't even seem like that many. Holy cow. There's two programs open there. Uh, 22, Oh my gosh. And then on this computer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Trust me, I'll close these, okay? 14. 15. 15. And I got a lot of programs open here too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten programs, fifteen tabs, forty-five tabs, and two programs over there on that computer. And I'm sure my phone has a lot of things that are active and running in the background also. And now I gotta go pick up my son. If he wants to be picked up. I don't even know anymore. Anyways, I am done. I am done talking about myself. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, Brian, for cheering me up. Talk to you later.